Okay, looking back over the notes, it seems like you have to modify the titles of the books in order to get the letters for the code. I don't know what to do about Zoo Praxiscope, but as far as Hydro, Hydro and Aeroponics, so removing all duplicates. Does it mean this whole thing, growing without soil? Probably, you'd think. By Aki culture. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so probably. Okay, so Hydro, we'll just write it down so I can keep my stuff straight. Hydro, Onyx and Aero Onyx. Well, right off there, those are all duplicates. Onyx. Um, growing without soil. All right, so H, is there any H? There is. Is there any Y? That's a vowel. <laughs> D. Don't, no, and. R, yeah. Those are vowels. G. I don't see any other G's. The I's. Or does it mean the first part? Because in that case, there's an N. Growing with up. Also, well, no, there's a G over there. Hold on. Growing. There's an N over here. A T over here. That would mean an, the L from soil, I think. So we'll say L for that one. <sighs> and then nautical cartography. To our dear friend, one year soon you'll finally join us here at the seas. Oh wait, your notice. So there's the Atlantic Ocean, the Caribbean Sea. So I who is the sea, which also has to happen to start with a C. So we'll go see. Um, and then, but the zoo praxis cup, I have no idea. Animals abound in a merry round. Seated in the middle, you can answer your riddle on legs of four, they spin over more. So, if you take out the first four letters on either side, maybe. So it'd be Rax. It would start Raxus. I don't know. Not sure about that one. And then there's Ursots. So this shit. Where's Ursots? Okay, so two simple words. Oh god, I just did a new page for this, hang on. 
this is just making my brain hurt. Okay. But first, swap the first letter and the last letter. So I'm assuming it means like including both words. So we start out with air sats quid nukes, which is just a nonsense thing, I think. It's almost Latin, but not quite. You wouldn't pluralize nuke like that. So swap the first letter and the last letter. So then that would be S R A S G. E. Change the R and P to Z and Z to W. Remove the first appearance of any duplicated letter. Remove the first appearance. Like by first appearance, do you mean like do the swap and then the one after that is the duplicated and remove that one? Maybe it means that. Change the R to P and Z to W. R to P and Z to W. There's no... Oh, remove the first appearance of any duplicated letter. Uh, maybe it means the first one in the row. R to the Z. Of any duplicated letter. Okay, move the W one place to the right. Uh, move the ninth and tenth letters to the front. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. U and N. P S A T Q W I D C E. Un pesat quid Add an L after every fifth letter one two three four five L one two three four L change the second and fourth vowels to O oh wait the second not the first second and fourth vowels P S O T Q W I D L C O. Oh. Uh, move the seventh letter two places to the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Two places to the left. O L Q. W I D L C O. This is just nonsense. Invert the third and fourth letters. S P T 
O L Q W I D L C O. So, oh my God. Swap the second letter from the right, which is C, with the eighth consonant from the left. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Swap those two, which gives us U N S P T O L Q W I C L O. Place the first L to the right of its second occurrence. We only have one L. Oh, no, wait. Place the first L to the right of its second occurrence. Oh, okay. W, I, C, L, L, O. Move the third and fourth letters to the front. S, P, U, N, T, O, Q, W, I, C, L, L, O. Remove the C. This doesn't make sense. Spunto Quillo? Um, I think I fucked up somewhere. <laughs> Hold on. I don't want to do that again. Let me double check. Uh huh, lots of books. Okay. Oh, I lost a D somewhere. Quid. Oh yeah, I lost, I lost a letter. So, so the phrase should be spun to Q will do. So the letter here is Q. Um. And then we found the one for Hydro and Zooscope, I'm not sure. Zoopraxiscope. Uh.
So if we do the one in the very... It says the middle. One. Two. We'll go with X. Um, and then what order do they need to go in? Okay. And then we need to go out to the rock to find the fifth one, I'm guessing. Okay. Whew. Are we flying? Oh. Hey, I can fly too! See? Here we go! So you have to find... This thing. And it's in, in between. Uh, oh, there's a letter and a number? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, there is. I see. So the last one is N5. Ersatz, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what number Ersatz is. Okay. Okay. So. So one year soon. Hope you'll finally join us here. So I'm assuming that's a C. And then Aerosots I think was two, so we'll make that Q. And then three years into the study, that was the L. And then N was the last one. And then Aha! Ah, oh, Fiona. Final doll. I think this doll is supposed to be me. Oh, does she have red hair? Oh, yes. What are the books? What are all the books about? Oh, God, this writing. And despite my reservations, Brendan built and gave to Fiona my her very own jetpack. Her constant, often tearful pleas for permission to use his has simply be become intolerable. Brendan said it would help teach her responsibility, and I must admit, the look of pure joy on her face when he presented her with it and her spontaneous, utterly sincere promise to use it carefully forever and ever half convinced me it was a good idea. Besides, Brendan's work keeps us all so isolated here. It breaks my heart to think how lonely and bored she must be, but now she's everywhere, circling the castle, soaring over the bog, venturing out to the islands and back. And since Brendan is harder at work than ever on his liquid propellants, it falls upon me to don his jetpack and keep an eye on her whenever it appears she's getting too adventuresome. Brendan has made my job somewhat easier by fitting Fiona's jetpack with a device that causes it to automatically descend should she try to f fly beyond the borders of the castle toward town. The fireworks inadvertently caused by Brendan's test launches have already created enough stir in town where someone to see Fiona 
uh, arcing across the skies of, of Baylor, that would be the end of our happy life here for sure. Fortunately, working at the inn, as I do almost nightly, I hear all the rumors and manage to nip those concerning Castle Malloy in the bud by attributing the strange flickering lights some people swear they've seen up here to the activities of fairies, which to many, if not most, of our neighbors is, perfectly re is a perfectly reasonable explanation. Not that I'm complaining, mind you, Brendan has managed to fool everyone into thinking he's developing a new fuel for armored vehicles. In fact, he sometimes conducts tours of the false laboratory he maintains next to, next to the library in order su to support his subterfuge. If the truth of what he's developing in the real lab were ever discovered, I should have to think of the consequences. Oh dear, Fiona just shot by outside the window. Time to brave the jetpack and go see what she's up to. So is that Fiona running around? I suspect it might be. I don't know what this means. Um. So. I just wanted to sit down for a minute while I think. So we have the key. Um. So we probably should go open that little box. Sixth birthday to a darling daughter. Dear Fiona, you are the light of our life. Our deepest love to you always. Happy birthday. Yes, so this is Fiona's house. I think that's it. <laughs> Listen, I'm sorry. I shouldn't be in here. This is your home, isn't it? My name's Nancy Drew, and you're... you're Fiona, right? Fiona Malloy? Uh. Fiona, listen, I didn't mean any harm. See, mm. I'm looking for someone, a young man named Matt. I don't suppose you've seen him. Fiona? <laughs> <gasps> mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <sighs> creepy tunnels. Always with the creepy tunnels. No! Don't touch that! No! Not. Well, now you're trapped over there, then I'm trapped over here. No harm done. I take it you're Matt. I'm Nancy Drew, the maid of honor. Thrilled, I'm sure. You wouldn't happen to have a tunnel boring machine in your pocket, would you? Or food? Do you have any food on you? A biscuit or two? Some crisps? Cocoa Kringle? Anything? Uh, sorry. Oh, the only thing that woman in the shabby dress ever gives me are carrots and potatoes and such. I've been wandering around down here for days. I want something full of sugar and nice, greasy fat. You know, real food. She feeds you? Every once in a while, the silo slides open, and she'll be standing up there in the fresh air looking down at me. Then I get showered with vegetables, she goes away, and the silo slides shut. Whenever I talk to her, she kind of grunts as if she understands what I'm saying, yet she refuses to help me. It's like I'm her pet or something. And now there's two of them. <laughs> Dibs on the potatoes. Uh-huh. Why did this door shut when I pulled that switch? As best I can figure from the papers and drawings I found, you're standing in the laboratory where the bloke who lived here during World War II did all his top secret research. He was working on new forms of propulsion to be used in flying machines, rockets, that sort of thing. Apparently, to keep unwanted visitors out, he planted devices which would allow him, at the push of a button, to seal off the lab. This gate and all the others will go up when our hostess decides to feed us. 
Opening those silo doors seems to reset everything. Opening those silo doors is also the only way out of here. Believe me, I know. Hmm. How did you get down here? I stumbled upon the entrance to a secret passage in the nursery. So I thought it would be jolly good fun to make some ghostly sorts of noise from inside it and give Kyler a fright. But all of a sudden, this crow flew in through the window and came straight at my eyes. I fell backwards into the passage trying to get away from it, and the next thing I knew, I was falling through a hole in the floor. Fortunately, I only fell about two meters. So I got to my feet, and since it was dark and my glasses were knocked off when that crow attacked me, I started feeling my way along the wall looking for a ladder or something so I could climb back up. But instead, my hand hit some sort of button. A siren went off, the door above me slid shut, and there I was. I yelled until I was hoarse, but no use. I was trapped. So I felt my way along the tunnel, looking for another way out, until I got to the lab you're standing in. At which point, I blundered into the button you just pressed, siren goes off, door comes down, and suddenly I'm even more trapped. Not long after that, the doors at the top of the silo slid open. So I looked up, and by squinting really hard, I could see an old woman with long hair, wearing a long ratty dress, just standing there, looking down at me. I called to her, told her who I was and what had happened. I told her everything, called to her till I went hoarse again, but she just stood there. I even tossed my ring up to her, saying, go ahead, keep it, just get me the heck out of here. Uh-huh. Kyler's trying her best not to show it, but she's really worried about you. That's the worst of it. Knowing that my eagerness to play a silly prank on her is going to wind up ruining the wedding. She's going to be so disappointed and humiliated and appalled. She'll never forgive me. What an idiot I am. I love her so much, and I am so lucky a mongrel like me landing someone as smart and beautiful as her. And now, whether I ever get out of here or not, I'm going to lose her. What an unthinking, short sighted, immature idiot. For a while, Kit was convinced you disappeared because you had decided you didn't want to marry Kyler after all. I'm not surprised. The fact is, soon after we got here, he tried to tell me I was about to make a colossal mistake and that I should call off the wedding. Such wishful thinking on his part is exactly why I didn't ask him to be my best man. Oh, I made up some excuse about office politics and occupational expediency, but Kit was, and is, and hopefully always will be, my best friend. But having him be my best man, knowing he's still smitten with Kyla, I figured I'd pass. Mr. Delaney, the caretaker? He thinks you were spirited away by fairies. <laughs> you know... I actually missed that superstitious, super ridiculous old fossil. Kit and I spent the better part of an evening rigging line in the garden so we could fool him into thinking a leprechaun was moving through the bushes. Only a branch snapped off and whacked Kit in the eye. <laughs> that was that. Except I must admit, seeing as I have no idea who or what that thing is that has us trapped down here, Mr. Delaney might not be all that wrong. I'm pretty sure her name's Fiona. She's the daughter of Brendan Malloy, the guy who was doing all the research down here. Everyone thought she was killed, along with her parents, when this place exploded. But she wasn't, and she's been wandering around in the bog near the castle ever since. So, if our wedding ever does take place, it looks like I'll end up with a crazy in-law after all. I'll be in here checking everything out, okay? Great. Why don't I wait right here? <laughs> that animation, though. All right. Oh. <coughs> All right. Warhead. Good. Good. Oh no. Mad scribblings on the wall. What 
is this? Okay. Not, not creepy, not creepy. Nope. Not at all. Don't, not to worry. Uh. Okay. Um. This goes on top? No? Okay. Uh. <laughs> Trapped down in a bunker, what can go wrong? Oh, we can only have one of those, I see. Okay. Well. Payload. Fin types. Okay, are we literally doing rocket science? Oh, what? Did you know there was a button here that says, in case of lockdown, press to open? What? You mean something that could open up a way to escape was right under my nose the whole time? That does it. If I get out of here, I'm having that eye surgery. My weak stomach will just have to get over it. Oh. Oh no. Hold on. Wait. Hold on. What? Rocket notes. Have decided to confine tests to liquid propellants only. Believe they will prove more efficient than either a solid or hybrid propellant system. Uh, da da da. Da 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 da. Shifting so. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. Oh no. Only the uh, only fin type 1 is successful. Okay, so I got that one, I'm pretty sure. Uh Okay, we're literally doing rocket science. Okay, see notes in Castle Lab. Uh has been installed test launch tomorrow. We'll also attempt secondary launch. Launch controller to be prepped, insert safety key to power on, then flip first switch to check continuity. Green light indicates correct wire connection, arm rocket with second switch. We're just hitting cat okay. Uh, what? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Hold on. Just... This is a lot. This is a lot. This is a lot. Hold on. Anything over here? Okay. So... Category 1, 2, and 3. It looks like the only sure way of getting those silo doors to open is by launching the rocket. Uh... Oh, you have a whole ass... rocket. Oh no! What? Pardon? What? Which colors go with which? Why did you design it like this? I have so many questions. Okay. The these fins work. These fins. These Actual rocket science. Okay. We got the fins. There we go. Alright. Uh. 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 Check. All done. Did that. Check. 
Did that. Can't check that off yet. Can't check that off yet. On the checklist. Did that. Can't check that off yet. I did. Can't check that off yet. Those are the correct fins. I double checked. Only one works. I attached the type one. Okay. I uh, It's a little overwhelming. Uh, launch controller. Verify all arming switches are off. Prepare launch pad. Load rocket base on launch rod. Secure propulsion igniter position. Complete. It looks like the only sure way of getting those silo doors to open is by launching the rocket. So, do we have to like follow the wires? But I don't know which one goes. I'm not sure which color goes with which because they don't match. Oi, oi, oi. Do you have anything new to say? You like talking? I don't feel like talking anymore. Okay. Uh. Uh. Hmm. So. These are... Colors. Oh, okay. Here we go. Those must be the electricity things. So, yellow... Plus gray. purple orange plus brown blue plus black and then pink plus green okay so at least do that, because that seems like a discreet task. be right. All right. Check. I haven't done that. Okay. Prepare the launch pad. Load locker base. Secure propulsion and igniter in position. Complete rocket body. Verify the it controllers off. It looks like the off. only sure way of getting those silo doors to open is by launching the rocket. Attach wire leads to launch controller. Verify that. Lock into place. Insert safety key and controller and power on. Continuity check. All mobile devices for launch. Countdown to silo opening and rocket launch. Okay. See what? Oh, stage one. Okay. So what's the group one and two?
Hold on. So which... I don't... Oh, never combine chemicals from these different chem chemical groups. So it's category one, two, and three. Okay. What's the key one? Oh, we need the key. Oh. That's not obnoxious. Okay. So, category one is ammonia in H3. I'm guessing we have to, I'm not sure why we're doing this to launch the rocket, but you know, we have to get that key, I'm assuming. Sodium. Potat. Potassium. Aluminum. I'm oh, taking so long the game has given up giving me music. Hydrogen. So we'll give their numbers there, or their letter, whatever, you know what I mean. So two is here. Silver. H2O. Chlorine. Liquid oxygen carbon iodine There's that was a column for that and then there's only three categories so Rontium, beryllium, calcium, magnesium, barium, radium. Let's get the symbols for all of these now. Lord Ammonia. Wait, Strontium is one of them, isn't it? It's just SR. Beryllium is probably nearby. There's Barium. B A. Calcium. Was that calcium somewhere? Yeah, C A. Potassium is way over here, even though it's in this group. Okay, fine. Uh, is magnesium on here? Yes. Mg. Beryllium. I thought it was a beryllium. Be. They don't all make sense, so you have to check. Um, sodium is just in A. All of the weird ones. Uh, where's silver? Silver should be up here somewhere. AG. That was one of the weird ones because it's uh, based in Latin, I think. I don't think it's Greek. I don't think it's Greek. 
Mercury. I don't think we have mercury on here. Chlorine is CL, pretty sure. Radium is RA. Uh, platinum gold. I don't think we have any of those. Hydrogen is just H. H2O is the water. Chlorine, CL. Liquid oxygen should just be O. Uh, carbon. There it is, let's just see. Iodine, it's just I. Aluminum, it's AL. Where's phosphorus? It should be over here somewhere. Where's phosphorus? Just P. I love it when they're simple. Ammonia. Or is it the other end? I don't know that well. I think ammonia is the only one I'm missing. It's not that big. It's, it doesn't have that many atoms. <laughs> Or is ammonia a comp? Oh, NH3. Duh. It's not an element. Okay. Alright. So NH3 is a category 1. Well, I'm not sure. Oh, good. This won't get annoying. Eh. Good, good. Where does hydrogen go? Oh good, it goes in the first one. Excellent. Hydrogen won't explode on me, will it? Oh good, it didn't put me all the way. Good. Okay, good.
Okay, good. Oh my gosh. Alright, I'm gonna speed this part up. Pardon me. You were probably yelling at me. Okay. Let's try this again. Florian. Uh, Alaba, I mean. Never heard of that. Mercury. Bromine. Radon. Cesium. Oops. Okay, so Mercury is HG. That makes more sense. Bromine. Oh, radon is RN. Bromine. Cesium is CS. Bromine. BR. Uh, Alabamine. AB. Fluorine is F. Okay. Keep trying to do this then. Okay, but H2O should go in group two. Unless HG needs to be moved first.
All right. Why he stored the key back there, I have no idea. Okay. So. This seems important. Ninety point one. Uh, okay. What were the directions? I was busy getting blown up. Uh huh. Load rocket. Igniter in position. Complete rocket body. Perfect doors. It looks off. like the only sure way of Just getting those silo control. doors to open is by launching the rocket. Verify launch rocket position. Insert safety key in controller. Power on. Okay. Let's save. Safety key. Safety key. We are green. We are red. Red is bad. What did we miss? It looks like the only sure way of getting those silo doors to open is by launching the rocket. Arm all devices for launch. Hold on. Uh... Insert safety key to power on. The first switch to account, your green light indicates clear wire combination. Arm a rocket with second switch before initiating countdown. I thought we armed it. I thought we armed it. I thought we did this part. Pretty sure we armed the rocket. Pretty sure rocket is armed. Uh, okay. See it. Nancy? What on earth is going on? Matt! Kyla, we're trapped down here. Get a ladder or something. Oh, Matt, I've been so worried about you. Where have you been? I missed you so much. I was afraid I'd never see you again. And I've got so much to tell you. No, I take that back. There's only one thing I want to tell you. I love you. Do you hear me? I love you. By the time Kit came back with a ladder, Kyler had said I love you to Matt approximately 150 times. And Matt had said it to Kyler about 200 times. And they were still saying it to each other on the day of their wedding four days later. Even Kit remarked that Matt's little misadventure seemed to have been good for their relationship. Needless to say, this bummed Kit out. Until he met the very beautiful oh, young dear. Irish woman who catered the reception. Long story short, it looks like Kit will soon be returning to Ireland, and not just to sketch plans for potential housing developments. As for Mr. Delaney, he still can't accept the fact that the strange wail I kept hearing wasn't a banshee, but an old siren that Matt kept inadvertently setting off down in the tunnels. Nor is he clear on the fact that Fiona, whose jetpack was also a source of weird noises, was responsible for many of the strange phenomena he'd always attributed to fairies. But he understood immediately that Fiona was someone in need of compassion, and help the police take her into custody without incident.
Apparently, after the explosion killed her parents, Fiona was taken in and raised by an old hermit who lived alone in the bog hut, which did not exactly do wonders for the little girl's mental or emotional development. But she's getting lots of attention now, and she's so bright. After all, her father was a rocket scientist, that her prognosis is actually pretty good. Me, I'm on my way back to the States, via jet plane, not jet pack. My pack and Fiona's were quickly confiscated by military types, bent on adapting them for use on the battlefield. Unfortunately for them, Brendan's intricate fuel system has them completely and hopelessly stumped, which has no doubt made Fiona's crow and all its feathered friends very happy. They finally have the skies above Castle Malloy all to themselves. Uh-oh. Uh, I don't know. I didn't use it. Very much. No. Uh. Are you using the jetpack to get around? Uh. Getting the drink orders filled. <laughs> All right. When my best friend Bess Marvin wins a vacation for three at a resort on a private island in the Bahamas, she naturally invites me and her cousin, George Fane, to go with her. But by the time I arrive, the owners of the resort are nowhere to be found, and Bess has been kidnapped. To get her back, George and I must find a long-lost treasure, a quest that brings us face to face with many of the island's strange inhabitants, and forces us to risk our lives, both on and in the sea. Help us find the treasure, before this sun-drenched paradise turns deadly. In my next adventure, Ransom of the Seven Ships. Dun dun dun. All right, so I got a few of them. <laughs> All right, uh, I'll see you in the next one.